Unit 1 explored the nine factors that contribute to differences in ability level. What about genetic factors? We'll look at that later. There is another indispensable factor that underpins those discussed. The M word. The fuel of human behaviour, the central tenet of psychology. It creates in us a desire to overcome obstacles, to persist beyond the boundaries of comfort and to work harder than we otherwise might. As a result, we achieve greater things than expected of us. The M word underpins our choices, decisions and actions. What is this word? Motivation. Wouldn't it be great if students could be strongly motivated all the time? But that's not how it works. Individuals have to make the effort to become motivated and to remain motivated. What's the message in this next slide? Motivation works like the old saying, you can lead a horse to water but you can't make it drink. Students need to understand that only they can decide to be motivated and to do something about it when it goes missing in action. No one can force another to be motivated, to be passionate about something or even interested. As teachers, we might try, but be careful. Sometimes, the more you try to externally motivate someone, the less responsibility they'll take for their self-motivation. We don't directly motivate students, but we do try to influence their ability to motivate themselves. We support, encourage, give time, fire arrows of inspiration in the hope that students become curious and find delight in their learning. But ultimately, if it is to be, it's up to them. Understanding intrinsic motivation theory gives an insight in how best to try to influence self-motivation. Successful people are self-motivated. Why indeed? Teachers should not assume that the horse isn't drinking because it's not thirsty. There can be other explanations. The horse might not like drinking water. It might not know how to drink the water. The horse might not trust the provider or not understand the rationale for drinking water. Likewise with children and learning. We may not be privy to the truth about a child's disinterest, but understanding motivation theory is a good place to start. When children give up on an activity, they sometimes justify it because the activity was boring. People devalue what they're not good at to save face. More likely, when children quit early, it's due to a lack of confidence to succeed in the endeavour. In these situations, teachers and parents can question, what is it that bores? Or as Harvard would say, what makes you say that? Boredom means lack of engagement of the mind. This is unlikely to be justifiable as the reason for lack of persistence. A simple motto for students, a reminder that no one can provide the effort for another to learn. Students, if you want to improve, it's up to you. According to Harvard's Theresa Amabile, the greatest single motivator is making progress. People just love getting better at things. So to remain motivated in anything, you have to make progress. People who don't, stop trying and sometimes quit altogether. How do you make progress? The quality and the quantity of effort. This is a direct link between effort and motivation. Observing the factors for exceptional performance when you leave out early childhood events, this is essentially what remains. The good news is that the quality and the quantity of effort is in our control. This is an autonomous position, a fundamental feature of intrinsic motivation theory. DC and Ryan's self-determination theory, the most cited model of intrinsic motivation. Taking note of these three factors, teachers can adjust the environment to increase the probability for self-motivation to prosper. Competence is central. I'm making progress. I'm achieving goals. Relationships motivate and engage us. Unfortunately, children don't learn well from people they don't like. Children need teachers to trust, respect, value and like them. 
and to have high expectations of their performance. People have a natural yearning for autonomy. We see this when a child says, Mum, let me try it by myself now. Autonomous competence means I know how to improve. I know how to learn. I'm not good because of external factors, but because of my effort. It's determined by me. I'm the driver of my competence. Growth mindset is an autonomous disposition. As well as the freedom of personal control, autonomy includes willingness, volition and choice. The fixed position though, consists of factors outside of one's control, such as genetic determination, resulting in a degree of learned helplessness. It says, this is who I am, it's just the way it is. For the past 20 years, the modern day champion of the learning mindset has been Stanford University's Dr. Carol Dweck. Dweck's research included an investigation on why some learners quit so much quicker than others. Spoiler alert, Dweck found it clearly associated with a fixed mindset rather than a growth mindset. But the mindset question is one of attribution theory. How do you attribute your abilities? Why are you good at what you do? This is attribution theory. The two predominant responses reveal the fixed and the growth mindset. That is, some people view their intelligence as somewhat fixed. You can make small changes, but nothing major. Performance ability is more about innate talent. Other people, though, believe in the incremental theory of intelligence, that it can be improved through learning, training and effort. We'll learn more about the consequences of these mindsets in Unit 3.